Hello there and welcome back to some more of the Gran Turismo 2 Project A-Spec mod. Today we're going to be winning the GC500 Championship and if you want to win the GT500 Championship in Gran Turismo 2, you have come to the right place with this mod because there are many, many GT500 cars you could use. You could use reliveried Supras, new Skylines. You could, of course, go ahead and stick old school and use the NSX. You could even be a bit mental and use something like the j -Lock Lamborghini, bring some glory to a car that never really had any. You could even use a McLaren F1. However, if you want to win the GC500 Championship in the worst possible way, you could use this. This is the 1994 Lancia Rosso Martini Racing 037 GT500 car. Yes, this was actually raced in GT500. It showed up in the 1994 season at one race at Fuji, wasn't very successful, and was never really seen again. Today, we're going to win the GC500 Championship with it. And it's not just a case of this being, oh, it's a bit of a weird car. There are uh, some big issues with this one. For example, this car has 343 horsepower. The McLaren F1 has 521, and it's only 200 pounds heavier. Even the J-Lock Lambo has, well, 180 more horsepower and only weighs about 500 pounds more, meaning that will be significantly quicker. And that's without getting into the Supras and the Skylines and the NSXs, which have all been rebalanced thanks to this mod to their actual GT500 specs. So this should be interesting. We've got a five race championship ahead of us and we are going to make some adjustments. We're going for the super soft tires. I know, I know, technically speaking, they are the easy tires to win in this game with. However, we are with a 200 horsepower deficit, so I don't think it's going to be in as easy as you think it might be with those tires. We are also going to up the downforce. That is going to hurt our top speed slightly. However, I do think we're going to need it. We'll maybe not go that far. We'll go to there and we'll see how that does. Uh, we'll leave the gear ratios and stuff for now. Let's get into the race and see who our opponents will be. Okay, we are on the grid. We have a Skyline, the McLaren F1, which has just gone straight away to the front, an NSX, uh, two Supras. Yeah, this should be a pretty interesting battle of the cars. We've got some new friends, we've got some old friends. Let's see how we can get along. I was going to restart this a few times just to get as many unique and interesting opponents as possible of all these events, but yeah, first time round we uh, got quite a few good ones. I'm, gonna, I'm curious to see how that McLaren F1 does because the F1 statistically has one of the best power to weight ratios in this race, but of course can it actually compete with the other cars here, the actual sort of built from the ground up GC500 machines, and more importantly, can we keep up? That is the question. Even with the super soft tyres, this is going to be a bit of a tall order, although we have just got around the McLaren, which is a good start. Yeah, we are, like you say, on about roughly, per car, about 120 to 200 horsepower behind everything, so... That makes this interesting. What also makes this interesting is the fact that even though, as I mentioned, this mod does rebalance the GT500 cars to make them a little bit more realistic in terms of their statistics, that has resulted in a few surprises. Namely being the NSX is now perhaps the class of the field when it comes to this because it is incredibly light and yeah, it has really good power and it's mid-engine rear-wheel drive. Now, normally in the game you'd avoid the NSX because the NSX is the least powerful of all the GT500 cars. It's also probably the worst to drive because it's very oversteery. However, thanks to this mod, you don't have to worry about the oversteer so much because you're not making so much power. And because you're not making so much power, uh, the car is more controllable because everyone else isn't making so much power uh, it is yeah a lot easier to uh, have an upside to the NSX which is good because I really like the NSX it has 
I think out of all the GT500 cars in the base game, probably the best liveries of all of them. Also, we have this rather interesting situation where the free cars at the front are not necessarily the free cars at the front that you would expect. I was expecting that McLaren F1 uh, to come up here, but apparently not. We'll see what sort of lap time we can set on our first flying lap. A 120.2. I think we are going to need to get into the 119s if we are going to have any chance of pulling this off here. The idea, really, when it comes down to this, is we need to try and accrue as many points in the rounds where I can do well at, as opposed to the rounds where I do not do so well at. So, for example, I like Laguna Seca an awful lot. It's one of my favourite real life tracks and of course it's an absolute joy to drive in this game especially considering going off the track doesn't seem to have any form of performance uh, deficit. However, in this championship we're going to have to drive at places like Rome which I like Rome, don't get me wrong, however the AI is incredibly good when it comes to driving around the Rome circuit so I think that one is going to be a big challenge. So we sort of need to, as I said, accrue points in these rounds where we are not expected to, or where we are going to be more competitive as opposed to the rounds where we're not. I think Trial Mountain is where this ends as well. Trial Mountain is another quick track for the AI to go ahead and get around uh, super speedways in here, which could potentially be a challenge with the fact that the car does not make that much power. Uh, we are probably slippery aerodynamically. We haven't got a big wing or anything like that. We've got this uh, cute sort of tail fin. But yeah, nothing... Uh, we're, we're probably quite a, a slippery shape. Not too much in the way of downforce to slow us down. So this car, in case you were wondering in real life, it did disappear for a while and then it sort of resurfaced and it was commissioned back into Group B spec. I don't know if this was a road going Stradale that someone happened to turn into a GT500 car. I don't know if it was an official Lancia effort. I highly doubt it. And I also don't know if it was a case of this car was a Group B rally car and then it got turned into a GT500 car. I'm not too sure on all of that. But I do think it's very, very cool looking. I also love it how this mod, the Project A-Spec mod, really does add in the obscure stuff. So, you would expect an 037 to show up in this mod, full of, you know, new race cars and some new, uh, even some new rally cars and stuff. But the fact that they've gone ahead and instead of putting in the obvious Group B one and put in the GT500 car, which there's like two pictures of on the internet, that that's pretty cool. Uh, I do rather like that. Uh, one thing I should mention, of course, about Project A-Spec is that this is currently not available for public download. This is a test ISO I was given by the Project A-Spec guys, who you can see more of their work in my previous video on Project A-Spec, and you can also check out the links below in the description, so you can go and support the guys through Discord uh, and their Project A-Spec trailer and stuff. It's an upcoming Gran Turismo 2 mod, this one's going to be very fun. Uh, eventually the plan is to add new events and stuff, so that's all pretty cool. There are some corrections I need to make from my previous video, but let's just see if we can go ahead and trouble the, uh, the NSX on the way here. There we go. <laughs> Bit of a kamikaze move, but we got there. All right, we won in the uh, in the Lancia. That was a good start. The McLaren came last. That's a, a bad start for it. I think this uh, Raybrig NSX is probably going to be our biggest competitor in all of this by the looks of it. Either way, we will take our 50,000 credits. Wonderful. And uh, let's go ahead and see how we get along at the next round. Super Speedway. Mm. This, I think, is going to be trouble. I also think I should have adjusted the gear ratios. 
Now, good, we have a five speed. That's, uh, yeah. You know what they say about five speeds? It's incredibly useful to have five speeds in, uh, in race cars. You don't need six speeds, they just simply add weight. I'm curious to see who wins this. Um, in an ideal world, what we really want is we want the NSX to be troubled a little bit. I think the McLaren should do well around here, potentially. I also think this might be a case of trying to utilize Slipstream as much as we can. Although, I think our top speed is about 160, which is not ideal when it comes to this. The McLaren is up to third, I think, which is good. If we can come not last in this, that would be ideal. The Tiger Supra is going around in there, 170 miles an hour. We'll use the McLaren as a bit of leverage to get around the corner. The good news is, super speedway, the AI don't commit as much to this track as they probably should do. Like, do you really need to break around all these corners? Like this big, long strip here, I, d I don't think you really need to break. So we need to use our superior corner knowledge, I guess would be the way to describe it, to get around here to make use of the straight line speed deficit that we have. And of course the other issue is, even when we do get into the lead, we are going to have to hold off the cars behind. So another thing I should clear up about Project A-Spec is I mentioned about arcade mode in the previous video. Uh, at the time I didn't know this, but it has been told to me now that the arcade mode of Project A-Spec isn't going to be a feature. There is going to be no A-Spec arcade mode. So for those of you who are expecting these cars for the Hot Lap Classic, sorry, unless they put in some like hot lapping mode or something. Uh, it's not happening because, yeah, I, I use the arcade mode for obviously the Motorsports Land track and also because, well, I mean, the Motorsports Land track and also it's just easy to get the cars sort of correlated in arcade mode. But that's, uh, that's unfortunately not happening. The reason for it is because to create some cars like this 037 and like the Renault Spiders and all the other good stuff that we've seen already. This is, it's a case of they have to remove certain cars and one of those certain cars that they've had to, or one certain type of car that they've had to remove, got another win. Sweet. And the McLaren came fifth. I'm quite shocked uh, the McLaren didn't edge out the Supras. All right. This might be turning into a bit of a domination, but we've still got Roman stuff to go, so... As much as we have got a one-race lead here, uh, this could potentially turn a little bit more issue-filled. We'll see. Rome circuit, yeah. I I'm not expecting to win here, but we'll see. So yeah, they've had to remove the arcade-only uh, rally cars, which basically means the arcade mode, it can't see the rally cars and that sort of messes with it, basically. I I'm not sure on the like full technical way it works, but basically because there's no arcade mode rally cars, uh, the game's arcade mode won't function. So, as a result of that, no arcade mode for the full Project A-Spec mod. So, that's unfortunate, but, you know, I think for uh, the vast majority of people, and, you know, as much as you might not think it when you're hearing news like that, it is kind of true. The vast majority of people probably never even used those arcade mode rally cars and probably didn't even really think about them. I remember using them when I was doing split screen battles with my dad when I was about five, and also the Saxo rally car and that sort of coolness, and always wondering about what those cars actually were until it turned out that they are just sort of pre-modified existing cars in the game but yeah you know you don't think about the rally mode you don't really care about the rally mode so the rally mode being gone is it a big deal not really so that's uh i, I think like i say you'd probably rather trade a mclaren f1 for 
the pre-built Mitsubishi Lancer Evolution 4 rally car. Because that's a thing. Did you know that's a thing? Probably not unless you've uh, watched the Hot Lab Classic. Then there'll be someone in the comment section going, I used to love driving that car around to Heaty Maze. Yes, you did. I'm sure you did. But, yeah. Anyways, any other interesting suggestions you've got for the Project A-Spec mod, do let me know. I'm sort of thinking this is the idea I'm going to go with for future Project A-Spec uh, videos. Sort of go around the challenge route of trying to you know, win the GT500 championship in something ridiculous, or the GC300 championship, or, you know, even, I mean, it doesn't even have to be challenges, we could do sort of like, do I want to give away what the next video might be? That's actually a really good idea. I think I might do like the uh, Gran Turismo All-Stars, but I'll feature four other cars from the Gran Turismo All-Stars mode. That's actually a really good idea, <laughs> I'm keeping that one, so... Yeah, there'll be lots of uh, videos and stuff to come from this, and of course, even when the mod is fully released, I'll make a video covering everything in the mod. Also, let me know in the comment section, do you want to see me cover... Um, obviously, we used the Gran Turismo 2 Plus mod for the Hot Lap Classic, but if you'd like to see uh, an in-depth video on what the Gran Turismo 2 Plus mod actually is, and what it adds, even though it is a publicly released mod, do let me know and uh, I can facilitate that for you. What I would actually be interesting is I think there are download links to all the different versions of it, so we could even do sort of a... I'll, I'll look through all the different versions of GT2+, Plus potentially, if that's something you're into, and if that's something I have the time to go through and uh, look through. We'll see. So we're catching these guys, which is good. We're not massively off the pace or anything, by the looks of it. I was a bit worried in that first lap because we were sort of fighting with the uh, the Unisica Jex Skyline, but as it turns out, it's actually not too bad. Even if the Supra has just got all of the, uh, the turbo pace there, so that's nice. So yeah, let me know what you want to see from the, uh, the Project Air Spec mod. I'm happy to do more demonstrations of the cars and indulge in some interesting challenges. Just obviously bear in mind the fact that I am not, I, I will very happily admit that I am not the best Gran Turismo player in the world. I play this game relatively casually, as in I'm not gonna sit here and have great battles with the AI if there's a case where I could just sort of fling my car up the inside and use them as a barrier to get around the corner. I drive Gran Turismo like you're supposed to drive Gran Turismo, not like a super serious racing simulator, which obviously this isn't. Which is back when Gran Turismo probably was a bit more fun, to be honest with you. Don't get me wrong, it did take itself super seriously back in the day, but it didn't really have the ability to take itself that seriously. Whereas Gran Turismo now, obviously, it uh, takes itself very seriously wants to be a esports and an FIA sanctioned motorsports event thing and all the rest of it and it's like eh, miss me with all of that please I'm, I'm just not I'm not a big fan of the uh, the modern day Gran Turismo way of doing things of it all its focuses on esports and competition and all that and sport mode I hate online racing I, I would much rather have far more... I, I have a lot more fun with compelling single-player content as opposed to doing online racing. I think the only thing I would ever consider doing online racing in is maybe iRacing, because that looks kind of interesting, but that's, like, super serious. I'm not being funny. That's me with a wheel. I, I don't want to... I don't play Gran Turismo to plug in a wheel and really feel the g-forces of all the cars as they go around the like i just want to play it with a ps4 controller um and just chill out or in this case play it with an xbox 360 controller because <laughs> why not i don't think we're catching the ray brig sorry if you heard that background noise there's some 
Hell's Angel Reborn Again Biker, my least favourite source of people. Tracing around on his... Well, you'd probably call it a Harley Davidson, but it's probably some like Honda Lazy Boy or something like that. Speaking of Honda Lazy Boy, uh, we are not catching the Raybrig. He is going to go ahead and secure another point. Damage control, admittedly, in this uh, in this race, but that that is better than I was expecting it to be. To be honest with you, I was expecting far worse. So I know the last race here is Midfield Raceway. I don't know what the fourth race in this championship is. F1 only came. The F1 had, gets like really good starts and then it just seems to completely fall away. We're only two points ahead of that Raybrig NSX. That's what I was saying, you know, little losses even like this. If we were third place in this race, you know, we'd, ha we'd have had problems. <laughs> so, just because it looks like it's a surefire win yet, the Raybrig is just absolutely destroying everything. Trial Mountain, alright. Let's see how well this goes. Trial Mountain's one of those tracks. I like Trial Mountain. I mean, obviously, it's a certified Gran Turismo classic. I'm not especially good at Trial Mountain. I'm a lot better in these older games than in the uh, sort of GT4 onwards, where it became a little bit more harder to drive this course. And of course, everyone remembers those horrible license tests in GT3 and 4 where you had to drive the R32s through the forest and it was terrible. In fact, I think that was a remake of a GT1 license test, which is also terrible, so... All good things there. Let's see if we can go ahead and overtake the, uh, the Tommy R33. So yeah, I mean, if we don't do well in this race and the Raybrick wing wins, we're going to have a serious problem at midfield. Because midfield is... I, I don't know how midfield's going to go, to be honest. Because we've... Um, obviously our main strength here is through the corners. That's what we're trying to use to our advantage. And midfield's a bunch of straightaways. So and we don't have straight line speed. Again, we are... From that NSX, if I had to guess, we are... At the very least, 110 horsepower down, if not more. And, like, I'm not being funny, we're a full Honda Jazz. Modern day Honda Jazz. We are a full Honda Jazz down on power to the Raybrick. That was a very good drive through that uh, corner, which has managed to help us and buy us some time here, so that's good. Let's see if we can go ahead and get the. Tiger SO Supra. Cool car, that. One of my more favourite with uh, that was added with this mod, definitely. Just because it's it's so different and mental looking, isn't it? Also, this is definitely going to be the uh, the track we get the thumbnail with because we're racing with all the uh, the new content, which is nice. Meanwhile, the Denso Sard Supra is battling away with the NSX. I never actually realised that uh, Denso Supra was a bit of a backmarker in JGTC. Like, they're a little bit of an underdog team, those. I guess because they're not, like, affiliated with the full uh, Tom's Works outfit, which, unlike the Castrol and... I forgot the name of it. It's got a Japanese name. The yellow and blue Supra that was added with this mod. Uh, that was sort of the sister car to the Castrol. Yeah, there we go. Get the Denso, but a little bit of issues coming over the curbs. We are quick through here. Can we get the Raybrig under braking? We can try and get the Raybrig under braking. The Raybrig isn't having none of it, though. Let's see if we can dive up the inside of him. The answer to that is no. We're just going to careen into a rock face, which is not ideal. In case you was wondering, driving into rocks is not conclusive to having a quick race car. Who could have guessed? Here comes the Denso. You can hear its giant turbocharger from a mile away. Alright. Good 
through here. Smash into the wall, naturally, as you do. And then on the big curbs. I don't... Mm, it's that first sector, isn't it? The first sector is where we've got our biggest chance of overtaking this guy. But of course, similar to that event at Super Speedway, the issue is even when I get past him, I'm going to have to defend for my life against this guy. Get him on the brakes there, but that is outbreaking ourselves far too much into the tunnel section. He's going to clip the grass, but it doesn't stop him going ahead and getting into the lead. But this is um, this is one of the really cool things with this mod. This GT500 championship in the main game it is free from restriction. So you basically just, I mean, let's be honest, most of you just bring the Escudo here and win. As opposed to now, thanks to the GT2 Plus mod, you know, it's got a 591 horsepower limit on it. And you have actually got to think a little bit about how you're going to approach this event. How are you going to go ahead and win? As I'm showing right now, even equipped with the super soft mean tyres, and admittedly, obviously, the AI in this game not being the best. You know, you can't just show up in an 037 and expect to to win all the races. You do actually have to go ahead and pick your GT500 machinery accordingly. You know, do you want to go with the NSX and risk some handling issues? Do you want to go with the McLaren F1 and have all the straight line speed but risk handling issues? Do you want to go ahead and go for the big boy Supra, which is a good all-rounder, but you're just going to be exposed on a track that the NSX suits more? You know, stuff like that. It's all very interesting how your decision making is uh, more altered now that the restrictions for the event have been upped and how all the cars are a little bit more sort of more tightly congested. There's not really in this class, in the base game, the R34 would just completely walk away with this because the R34 in the base game has 700 horsepower and all-wheel drive and can just absolutely decimate everything and anything the R34 can't decimate the Supra can because the Supra is lighter and perhaps is a little bit more suited to people who are into rear-wheel drive whereas the MSX gets left in the dust and then obviously you've got the the tires and Viper and stuff like that which is just sort of lesser cared about cars so, it's very interesting how your uh, mindset goes on there. I don't think I'm going to have the straight line speed to do a run here, although he has hit the brakes. Can we do him on the line? We've done him on the line, boys! Yes! Alright. That is a good boost to the old self-esteem as we head into the final round. We are four points ahead of the NSX, but of course we could still have some calamities. Alright, let's go ahead and get ourselves into that final round at Midfield Raceway. We're on a high, we're winning money. Four points. I am still worried about... Oh no, never mind, it's not Midfield, it's Apricot Hill. That's even worse for us. So let's just run some hood elements back on. Yeah, this... Uh, Alright, that's not the track I was hoping for. If it was midfield, don't get me wrong, the AI is quick at midfield, but, you know, I still think we could maybe go ahead and uh, beat them. Being Apricot Hill, this is a track I'm not so good on, and these corners are exposing the fact that this car suffers from understeer, which is not ideal, it does have to be said, when it comes to this. I always like this version of Apricot Hill that's got the, uh, the little skyscrapers over there. Also, the McLaren is going for a bit of an adventure, which is good. Yeah, I like this one. It sort of makes it feel like this random racetrack was just plonked into the middle of a city, which is, like I say, definitely an interesting point of call. I don't know what sort of where the skyline's based off or if those are just random buildings they've taken from other places. But, yeah, 
And also you got these little buildings here, like a little barn and some other stuff. Gives the track a little bit of a, a European feel to it. I don't know where Apricot Hills Raceway is supposed to have been based in the main game. Like I say, it, a lot of these tracks, uh, you know, obviously it doesn't explicitly say the location of them, but there are, there's definitely stuff implied with the track. So, for example, uh, Deep Forest Raceway is where all the German national events take place. Trial Mountain's supposed to be set in the UK. Obviously, you've got the Loch Ness Monster and stuff like that in the later games. Uh, High Speed Ring, I think, has always been supposed to have been set somewhere in Japan. Stuff like that. It's all very cool how it's all, like I say, stuff supplied. Obviously, certain tracks like Grindelwald is, you know, obviously in Switzerland and. Well, Tahiti Road isn't actually on the island of Tahiti, as it turns out. I can't remember. It's an island near there where the, the actual track map is perfectly suited to it. It's like a one-to-one -one recreation. Oof. All right, that's slow through there. So, four points. I'm not sure where that means we need to place. I think it's four four higher. I won't risk it. If I can go for more track position, I will do, but I think that's sort of it. You can see this straight line speed that Supra has got over us is just absolutely night and day difference between that and this. It really is quite the, uh, quite the speed boost in that car. Don't want to go around the outside on this corner. As soon as I uh, got out there, I realised I was in a place where I did not want to be. <laughs> Definitely do not want to be coasting around the outside of the Supra there. We want to try and stay within the confines of an overtaking spot. I am actually feeling a little bit under pressure from this uh, SO Supra behind me. I do know we've obviously got the chicanes coming up where I can carry a lot more speed than these guys can, but also, just because that's true doesn't necessarily mean... I mean, yeah, there you go. The Tiger Super has got ahead of us again, and he's going to block us slightly, which means we can't get the run I would like on the Denso Sar Super. As we come on to lap number four, we've got two laps to hang in there, but like I say, ideally I would like to make a move for second place or even the win although I think the NSX is probably a little bit out of reach yeah it's just under steering through there the chassis is not quite as good as the cars around us as you'd expect because it's an 037 go ahead and see if we can okay he went wide well he tried to go the outside route there, which as we've mentioned is not the correct way around I f oof. Yeah, I think if the championship is logical, I think we could get fourth and win the championship on countback because we'd tie on points, but obviously uh, with countback we've won more races than he has. But I'm not too sure. Like I so, said, let's not risk it. Let's try and get something cooking in the old oven here. Coming on to the final lap. That is a better run on the Denso. We've got the Denso. Can we stay in front of the Denso though? That is the question down the straight. I think he is going to be getting all of the speed boost on us. Potentially not as much as I was expecting. And we can stay ahead around the corner. NSX goes a little bit wide, maybe a little bit of uh, pressure is seeping into him as he sees the other mid-engine car in this race. That isn't the McLaren <laughs> uh, winning. And he's got a, yeah, we've got three mid-engine cars in this, which is interesting. Yeah, let's see how well we can do. He is perfect through that corner. Denzo's coming back at us a little bit round here. 
but we'll see if we can hold on for the win, potentially. Potentially. Come on, Lancia. Come on, 037. Do something you were never designed to do. Win something that isn't the WRC World Championship. Good run through there. I think they're flat out in this game through this corner though. It is going to be tight to the line, but I think we have won the GT500 Championship in the 037. Don't get me wrong, it needed mean tyres to do it, but we got there. 36 points, 2 points to the NSX. The Denso comes third, fought for the Tiger Supra, and then the, the, uh, the McLaren. Again, like I said, the McLaren not competitive, which is something I wasn't expecting. I was expecting it to be a bit more up there in terms of results, but there we go. Perfect. There we have it. First place, 200,000 credits. I don't think I've ever fought so hard for 200,000 credits in this game before. That was, that was actually quite challenging. I was not expecting that to uh, go quite as well. As it did. We get the tyres on Viper, as you can see. 463 horsepower, 2,689 pounds. That is actually probably quite a bad car to go ahead and try and win that in. But, uh, yes, we've done it. We have won the GT500 Championship with this car. Anyways, that's it for this episode of the Project A-Spec mod. Do hope you've enjoyed. Uh, as always, please feel free to link stuff down below. Uh, that you'd like me to try out or comment down below with stuff you'd like me to try out and also look down below for the links to everything you need regarding the Project A-Spec mod all the credits to the developers thank you all very much well, thank you to the Project A-Spec team for going ahead and supplying me with an early access build to the mod very much appreciated as it was last time and uh, yeah, thank you all very much for watching until then, farewell